Hey everyone, in this video I'll be teaching you how to make Alpha Minecraft in 20 minutes. Now in this video, we won't make stuff like crafting or the inventory, but I will be covering random terrain generation, mining, different block types, and placing blocks, and in only 20 minutes. So enjoy. Create a new project for your new game. Okay, so in the description of this video, I've provided an asset. This has all the Minecraft textures for educational purposes, but what this means is that if you use these textures, you're not allowed to sell the game, because that's illegal. There's also a very quick movement controller with a mouse look script, because that's not within the scope of the video. I'll just show you the code real quick for it though. Okay, so let's get started on the terrain generation. First, we need some blocks. So I'll just highlight all these textures right here from our pack and make sure the filter mode is set to point. This is what you use for pixel art. Otherwise, it'll just be really blurry. Let's create a new folder and we'll call it blocks. Drag our textures in here. Create a new material. Let's call this one dirt. Turn the smoothness down and change the albedo to dirt. Now let's create a new 3D object cube. Give it the dirt texture. Make sure it has a box collider. We can rename this to dirt block and drag it in our blocks folder. Now we can duplicate these two, and let's make one for stone and bedrock. And change the texture, so for bedrock. And stone. Like so. Now let's get started on our terrain generation. Right click in your hierarchy, create a new empty game object called terrain generator, add a new c -sharp script called terrain generator, create and add. Let's delete this for now. Add a new public theme object, dirt prefab. Another one for stone prefab. And one last more for bedrock prefab. Cool. Add a public int chunk size, and let's set this to 32. Add a public float noise scale, and let's set this to 0 0.1. And then add a public int for terrain height, and we'll set this to 10. Cool. In our start method, We'll call a new method called generate terrain. Like so. In here, we'll set int half chunk size is equal to chunk size divided by two. And we'll make a new for loop for x, instead of 0, we'll put minus half chunk size, and for the upper, we'll put half chunk size, duplicate this, and we'll also do this for z. So what this does is it iterates column by column, row by row, on like laterally. Then we'll set int total height equal to, and we'll cast this as an int math dot Perlin noise, and we'll pass in x plus half chunk size times noise scale, comma, open brackets, z plus half chunk size 
times no skill, and then times terrain height. Like so. Cool. So this will give us the total height of the hill that we're about to generate. So let's make another for loop for y equals 0 and y is less than or equal to total height. And for now, let's just instantiate a dirt prefab at a new vector 3 x, y, and z and at the default rotation. So quaternion.identity. Make sure to add a comma here. Let's drag in our blocks into the inspector. And let's test this out. There we go, we have some random terrain. Cool, awesome. Now let's vary the blocks based on height. Let's declare a game object new block. Now if y is equal to zero, let's copy this. We'll set new block equal to instantiate bedrock no, bedrock prefab else if y is equal to total height. So this is just the very top layer. We'll set new block equal to instantiate dirt prefab. And in all other cases, we'll set new block equal to instantiate stone prefab. And then at the end, just for organization, we'll set new block dot transform dot parent equal to this dot transform. And let's try this out. Cool, this looks awesome. We've made so much progress, so let's keep going. Now let's make our character controller. So drag in your character controller into the scene. Let's set the Y to something like 10. So just so it doesn't clip through the floor, delete your main camera in your scene. And let's add a little plus in the center to be true to Minecraft for the crosshair. Create a new canvas and let's create an image. Set the width to 3 and the height to 20. Duplicate it. Set the width to 20 and the height to 3. And now we can walk around. Perfect. Now we can't destroy, place, or change blocks, so let's add that. On your main camera, add a new component, and we'll call this script interaction. At the very top here, we'll add a public game object, selected object. And in this update method, we'll check for three input events. So we'll do pool, left, click, first, and we'll set this equal to input the get button down, fire one, and we'll make a bool for right click pressed, and this will be input the get button down, fire two, and then we'll make a final bool called g pressed, and we'll set this equal to input the get key down key code dot g. Cool. Now we'll check if left click pressed or right click pressed or g pressed. And if so, we want to send a raycast out from this camera. So we'll do raycast hit. Hit. And we'll make a new ray called ray and we'll set it equal to new ray from transform the position in the direction of transform dot forward and this is attached to our camera obviously so that forward is where we're looking currently if physics dot ray cost we'll pass an array and out hits. So this is the ray that we're shooting that is invisible and this is our hit event 
for tracking what happens. And in here, we'll actually check which of these buttons we pressed. So we'll do if, left click, press, or else, if, right click press, or else, if, G press, like so. If we press the left click, we want to destroy hit dot game object or dot transform dot transform dot game object if we press the right click we want to go vector three block spawn points equals to hit the transform dot position and then what we'll do block spawn point plus equals hit dot normal so what this does is if we click to spawn a block on this face right here, the normal will be one block out from this face. Similarly, if we click to spawn on this face of this block, the normal will be one block up from here. Now, now that we know the position, we do instantiate selected object at our block spawn point with quaternion.identity. Now, if we press G, we want to set the block that we're looking at in our inventory as our selected object. So we'll set selected object equal to hit the transform, the game object, and this should be our placing and destroying code. Now, in our player controller, on our main camera, for our selected object, let's just set stone by default like so. And there you have it. Now we can break and place blocks. The very last thing I want to add is some trees. So let's make a new block for wood and leaves. Make sure that it sets the leaf material rendering mode as transparent. Cool. And let's create our tree prefab. So drag your wood into your scene. Make sure to center it. And let's set the scene to grid snapping up here. Select your wood and press Control D or Command D on Mac to duplicate it. And this will be the trunk of our tree. Then let's drag in our leaves and we can move it up here. Extend it by two blocks on each side. If this is messing with selecting stuff, you can disable gizmos like this. Select all your leaves, press Ctrl D, like so. Now we have sort of a tree, now let's make it taller. So let's once again select all the leaves, duplicate it, move it up by one. If you're having trouble selecting stuff, select it to opaque as the rendering mode. Now select the three by three square of leaves in the center of the tree. Let's duplicate it, move it up by one. Duplicate it again and move it up by one. Then destroy, delete these corners of leaves. And now we have a fairly standard Minecraft tree Let's set it back to transparent, like so. Now we can parent all of this to one of the wood game objects. And now we have a tree, fantastic. Let's drag this into our blocks as an original prefab, delete it from our scene. In our terrain generator, let's add a new public game object. Tree prefab 
and in here we'll add a public float called tree spawn chance and we'll set this equal to 0 0.005 now when we're spawning our dirt prefab we want to also have a chance of spawning a tree so we'll do if random dot value is less than tree spawn chance like so we'll do game object game object new tree equals instantiate tree prefab at new vector 3 x y plus 1 and z and we'll set the rotation to quaternion dot identity like so and we'll just parent the new tree so we'll do new tree dot transform dot parent equals to transform cool make sure to drag your tree into the tree prefab thing in the terrain generator and if we play this we should see some trees And there you have it. This is how you make Minecraft extremely quickly in Unity. I hope you found this interesting. Um, one last thing, if you want this bedrock to be not destructible, you can set the layer of the bedrock to be ignore raycast, like so. And now this will just ignore our destroy raycast, so it won't destroy. And there you have it, guys. If you like this, hit the like. I hope you found this enjoyable.